today's story is Anomaly Part 5, The Hybrid, by Rando Calrissian. The end of the escape tunnel led into a dense and thick forest, a place where they could easily be hidden. We cannot stay here, the creature proclaimed, and not only will the queen follow this tunnel, the spore will find it as well. Attracted by the noise and the chaos, it said, pointing its long, scaly finger down the tunnel. Then where do you suppose we go? Arthur asked. The child is sick and needs medical attention. We must bring her back to my people, it said, rubbing Maria's forehead. We will not be able to heal her, however. We can provide her with blood to keep her from growing rabid. How do we know we can trust you? Rachel interjected. You can't, but I am the only hope you have, the creature proclaimed. Arthur and Rachel were silent. They looked at each other as if they were silently debating. Show us the way, Arthur exhaled. No, no, Rachel snapped. Arthur, we don't know anything about these things. For all we know, he could be leading us into a trap, she said firmly. And what other choice do we have? Arthur asked in frustration. Soon, this forest will be swarming with zombies, he shouted. His words echoed through the forest. Maria covered her ears in Winston pain. When the creature saw this, it hurried over to her in what seemed to be a panic. When he reached her, he put his hand on one of her cheeks to calm her, and the creature examined her for a moment. How long? The creature asked quietly. How long has she been like this? The creature asked again, this time more abruptly. How do you mean? Rachel asked, her tone confused and worried. She has no control over senses, the creature explained which means the transformation process is not fully complete, so I will ask you again, how long? It asked, looking back at them, its eyes wide and its face full of fear. We found her like that, Arthur proclaimed. What do you mean, the the transformation process? He asked, walking closer to the creature and the girl. There's a special type of venom that only a queen has, the creature said picking up the girl and coddling her in his arms. It's the venom that can turn other species into vampires. The venom to make hybrids. However, the queen was not able to finish this process. Either she stopped or she was interrupted, it said, breathing heavily. If we don't get this girl to my people now, she will not only become a danger to us, but a danger to herself and everything on Symic. Without another moment of hesitation, They followed the creature to its people. The forest was thick and dense, with bushes as sharp as knives, strange insects the size of a human hand, and various creatures scattered throughout the forest. Finally, they reached an underground tunnel that led straight to the creature's people. Arthur, Rachel, and Maria were met with glances and whispers. My people, the creature said aloud when he reached the middle of the underground cave. These last four hundred years have been hard, the creature proclaimed. There is no doubt that because of the spore, we are now part of an endangered species. When the creature said this, its people hung their heads in sorrow. We were once a fierce and noble race, reduced to little more than scavengers and rodents. But soon, with the help of the humans, we will take back what is ours and take back Symic. It said raising one fist in the air. But first, the humans need our help. This girl, the very girl that I carry in my palms, the queen has attempted to make a hybrid out of her. However, she did not complete the process, the creature said, holding her out for its people to see. Give her to the queen, and let the vampires go back to their own war on their planet, an old, frail female creature said in the crowd. If we help the humans, they will help us destroy the spore, the creature reiterated. The vampires do not concern me at this moment in time. Is it true? Another creature said, looking at Arthur. Will you help us if we help you? It asked again. Help us, and both the spore and the vampires will go extinct. You have my word. After Arthur said this, all the creatures nodded their head in unison. The creature holding the young girl laid her down on a table for the physicians to examine her. 
Once things had died down, Rachel went to go speak to Arthur. We need to talk, Rachel said. About? Arthur asked, looking up at her as he was sitting down on a rock protruding from the wall. About what Jennifer, that thing, said back there. I don't know what you mean, Arthur said, pulling a knife out of his shoe and examining it. Don't play dumb. You know exactly what I mean, Rachel shouted, pulling the knife out of his hand. All that stuff about your true name? What the hell did she mean? Rachel said, her eyes getting red with the single tear coming out of them. You've lied to me so much throughout my life, at least grant me this one truth. The truth is nothing, he said standing up. She was playing a mind game and nothing more, he said, looking at her with disappointment in his face. I don't believe you, she snarled. Believe what you want. Fact of the matter is, I'm... He was cut off abruptly. Maria was screaming on the operating table. Both Arthur and Rachel raced over to her. They found her with two creatures holding her down and her hands over her ears. It hurts! It hurts! Maria kept shouting. What the hell is going on? I thought you said you were going to help her. Arthur shouted at the creature. We're trying to. The creature shouted back. Her senses are overloading. Her body doesn't know if it should reject or accept the venom. Isn't there anything you can give her to make her calm down? Rachel yelled, trying to hold the girl down. They're coming. They're coming and we're all going to die. The girl screamed. As soon as she said this, she passed out. What the hell is she talking about? Rachel yelled in frustration. She heard something. Something closing in on our position, the creature said in fear. She's delusional. She doesn't know what she's talking about, Arthur snapped back. Don't be so certain, the creature proclaimed. As I said, her senses were overloading. She can hear, see, smell things from miles away, it said, its eyes locked on his. Do you have any weapons? Arthur asked. Yes, but nothing like yours, it answered. If what you say is true, get the elderly and the children out of here. Get every able-bodied man or woman a weapon and meet me at the top of the cave. It nodded and did as he said. When the elderly and the children were safe, everyone that could hold a weapon was standing at the top of the cave, waiting to see what came out of the forest. And the weapons they had were primitive swords and spears and something that resembled a bow and arrow. What's your name? Arthur asked in quiet, still air. Minoc, the creature said. In my tongue, it means warrior. What is your name? Arthur, he replied. When we were on the boat, you spoke of something called the Wendigo, and how the vampires are trying to kill it. Oh, yes, the Wendigo, Minoc said, smirking. It's the exact opposite of a vampire, a creature that bathes in sunlight, but can also dwell in the darkness, he said, looking forward to the trees. Have they ever come here? Arthur asked. No, and if they did, they would be severely weakened. They can only live close to the sun, it said, looking back over to him. I see. Well, let me ask you something else. Why did the queen choose her? She's not even 15 years of age, Arthur asked. There were multiple other candidates, ones far older and stronger, but why her? Because of her age. A mature adult's body will not accept the venom like a child's will. It replied, when it did, the trees started to rumble and the ground started to shake. They looked up to see a swarm of zombies, some still in the middle of changing from whatever they were before. The spore, a creature yelled. I know you will survive this, Minoc said to Arthur. No matter the outcome, I know you will live, so in the event that I die, there's something I need you to know. I know who you are, and if you keep it from your daughter, you will lose her, and she will resent you for the rest of her life, he said, whispering to Arthur and pointing out his spear. I've already lost her, Arthur said. Telling her the truth, it won't change that.
Hey there, friends. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. This was Anomaly Part 5, The Hybrid, by Rando Calrissian, the fifth part of this seven-part series. Two more weeks, and then we get to the end. That'll be interesting. I'm very curious to see where this goes, because it's a damn good series. Uh, he's done a very good job on this, and I'm very excited to see where it goes, honestly, so. All right, friends. If you are as excited as I am for this month, for the rest of the series and for the future please consider joining the nevermore to join the nevermore all you got to do is hit that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it that makes you part of the nevermore you can also support the nevermore by following me on any of my social media links down below or supporting the channel through patreon or coffee every bit of this is optional to you but if you choose to do any of them just know i'm beyond grateful all right friends hope you have a beautiful day hope the rest of your week goes swimmingly and I'll see you on the next video, but until then, sleep well.